Yo, 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 what's happening? It's Joe Dent, aka 37, kicking with my boy Humble Soul. Just to, just to get into it, man, so I said, you know, you're Mississippi bred. Right, before right. Before you came to ATL. True. So, just talk a little bit about your upbringing, man, and were you doing illustration and graphic design and all of that when you was coming up, but how did you get introduced to that? Uh, well, I guess, like, coming up, no. Like, really, you know what I'm saying, like I said, I'm from Mississippi, Columbus, mm. Mississippi, mm. and, you know, a small town, maybe... 20,000 people or less probably now but you know just real close knit everybody know everybody type you know what I'm saying type deal but art really wasn't a thing you know what I'm saying like that around where I was from like you know especially not like when you think about black artists and graphic designers like we didn't, I didn't really know what that was when I when I was graduating high school so like I always was drawing and I always been creative you know what I'm saying, my whole life. Like, I've been drawing since I was, like, five or six years old. Um, I've been playing music and stuff since I was, like, around the same age. So i always just been a creative person. Mm -hmm. But, like, it wasn't anything, like, where I was some type of virtuoso and I was in these paint programs and stuff like that. Like, we had a regular little art class mm -hmm. in, in, you know what I'm saying, in high school. It wasn't, like, a big art program or nothing like that so I just um I really just kind of fell into graphic design and stuff like I graduated and like from high school and then I I went I was to a two year and I was gonna do like architecture or some shit and I was like man I don't wanna do this you know what I'm saying like too much math I was like fuck this let me right. figure out what's across the hall and so the art department was right across the street. So, like, I went over there, and I was like, <laughs> I know how to draw. Right. It was like, the guy just graphic design major, and I jumped in it, and, like, mm -hmm. it really opened me up to, like, art and mm -hmm. just the whole world, you know what I'm saying, that I never really knew about until the end, so. Okay. So, I mean, at the, currently, you know, you do a lot of different things. Uh -huh. um, like, I know from videography to painting to yeah. illustrations, so I know you're an art, direct, art director from what right. I understand. But back in college, what was it like for you? After you jumped into graphic design, when you said, hey, I'm going to walk away from from, from, uh, from architecture yeah. um, and, and come over to that way, did you start designing flyers then? Or what was the next step after that to really start getting your name buzzing? Um, like, I guess after like I decided to go into a graphic design major, it was kind of like a process in, in the program. Like, you just don't really jump into graphic design. Like, they make you take mm -hmm. all the, like, fine art. So, I was, like, a fine art major mm -hmm. with an emphasis in graphic design. So, mm -hmm. like, I had to take a lot of drawing and mm -hmm. sculpture, clay, like, all these type of things. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. like, once I got into the program, yeah, I, I kind of, that was how I was kind of, like, hustling around campus and stuff, I was like doing flyers, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, for a lot of sororities and promoters who was throwing parties and stuff there, so like, mm -hmm. and you know what I'm saying, I was on the music side too, so like, I was doing mixtape covers mm -hmm. and all that, so I always kind of knew I wanted to be in the entertainment realm with art and design, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, I just didn't ever know what capacity, you know what I'm saying, back then I didn't know what capacity, but I knew like, I knew I, I wanted to be in the entertainment mm. and, the, and, and the music and just the promotion side of that, you know what I'm saying? So, so I mean, saying that back then, were you trying your hand at music too? Like, actually? Yeah, yeah, I've been, I've been, like, I've been around, I've been doing music, like, man, my whole life. Like, I started playing drums when I was, like, seven years old. Mm. I was in church, you know what I'm saying? My sister played the piano. Mm. And so, I, I had played drums in church from, like, seven to seven, to I was, like, 17. Okay. Like, so when I graduated and went to college, that's when I kind of like fell off the drums a little bit. But I started producing. I started making beats and shit right around that same time, like in high school, ninth grade. You know what I'm saying? I started making beats, bought a little beat machine. You had a little Casio keyboard, Fruit mm -hmm. Loops one, like when Fruit Loops first came out, like I was using that. So I was kind of around that. So when I got to school and doing the art and shit, mm -hmm. I was already kind of like. In it, in it locally, you know what I'm saying? Like around the Columbus, Starbucks, 
you know what I'm saying, West Point area, I was kind of moving, you know what I'm saying, doing my thing, so. He said you went to college where? Exactly. I went to Mississippi State. Mississippi State. Uh, okay. Mississippi State University. You know what I'm saying? Hell State. You know what I'm saying? But uh, it was cool, though. I, like I said, I was just, I, I did take, I took the opportunity being there and just what I wanted to do and try to turn a, a hustle into it. And it, it kind of got me to where I'm at now. Like, I made a little, you know what I'm saying, a little name for myself for the time period, time period I was there. Like, just like I said, doing flyers. Mm -hmm. I was I had an apartment. It was called Apartment K, and I used to have, I used to run it like, it was my little trap. Like, I always had a little studio set up in my room, you know what I'm saying? I was doing graphics for niggas, I was doing, I was recording cats, I was doing beats. So, like, mm. that was the spot, Apartment K, like, where, where all the creative people hung around, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. So, that was kind of the college experience as far as, like, design and music. Shit for me. I'm, I'm just curious to know you went to college and you doing these different things you're doing the covers True. you're doing the flyers so on and so forth are you getting paid for this what's the money looking like for you yeah I mean like at any time you're doing like especially when you're a graphic designer you're getting off you getting off the ground you're definitely gonna do some free work you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying but unfortunately I was making money doing <laughs> this you know what I'm saying because mm -hmm. one it wasn't a lot of people doing it like mm -hmm. so when you can corner the market like that you kind of you kind of got it got the game good so mm -hmm. I was definitely getting getting some bread mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying I mean it probably wasn't much I probably was doing like flyers for like twenty dollars mm -hmm. but that's but like shit I'm saying like you <clears throat> you in college mm -hmm. twenty dollars twenty thirty dollars a day you know what I'm saying that's your livelihood so. <laughs> It was it was profitable for me, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Just, you yeah. stack that up, you get you some shoes, you know what I'm saying? eat you know what I'm good saying? all that. Just man. eat, and just trying to eat, and just trying to get another pack of noodles, and a pack of meat that lasts me another week, bro. Like, for real. Survival mode. Man, for real. Hey, man, so, okay, so, um, I mean, so going from there, so, uh -huh. you getting your buzz going before, you said that kind of served, that was like the genesis. Yeah, true. Um. And then you blossomed into some some great. So, talk about the transition from Mississippi to to Atlanta to Georgia, and, yeah. and how was that that acclimation for you? Was it a culture shock going from Mississippi to to Georgia to Atlanta, or how was it, man, for you? No, I wouldn't really say it was a culture shock. Like I had kind of been trying to get out of here for a minute anyway. You know, what I'm saying like I knew this is kind of where my next step had to be. Like what I was trying to do, what I wanted to do, like, mm. it really wasn't an outlet or avenue for that in Mississippi, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, it was not, I mean, you had your hip hop scenes, mm. like the Golden Triangle, North Mississippi, Jackson and stuff, but Mississippi is so spread out, it doesn't have one, like, metropolitan big city like a Birmingham or Alabama mm -hmm. that people can flock to, so, I always knew I had to I had to get up out of there. So like I had when I graduated, you know, me and my wife, we wasn't married at the time, we we had just started talking that day and mm -hmm. we was like, We out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like I had a job, I was working a little desk job doing some excuse me, doing some design work. We re, the office relocated out here mm -hmm. in Kennesaw, moved out here and like I said, just kinda kinda just took the same thing what I was doing back home and tried to amplify it once I got out here, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like I said, it wasn't a culture shock because like, I had I had partners out here, you know what I'm saying? I knew people from, you know what I'm saying, Mississippi State and home that was out here. So like, mm -hmm. it was, it was kind of easy transition, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. For me, I know sometimes like moving to another state can be hard, but like, I definitely had it planned out, you know what I'm saying? So mm. that made it easier, you know what I'm saying, on mm. myself. But yeah. And you now you, you said something and you just made me think when you were comparing, you know, like the Alabama to the Georgia, like you say like a Birmingham or yeah. Atlanta or I guess you could say like Shar or so on and so forth. Right. So for Mississippi, I know you're saying it's really not a city like that. Well, you wouldn't consider Jackson to be like that. Jackson is the Jackson is that mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, but Jackson is not like 
I, I, I'm saying, like, not saying that Jackson isn't, like, a metropolitan area, because it definitely is, but an area that attracts, like, uh, Birmingham or like I said, like a Charlotte or mm. Atlanta. It's not. It's right. you know what I'm saying. It's just not. It's not Mississippi as a whole is not attracting anything. You know what I'm saying. It's it's losing a lot of its best resources actually. So, in the music music side, especially when you think about, I mean, this I'm starting doing this like when I'm in high school. So this over almost 20 years ago almost. Mm -hmm. Like this 2000 2001. Is when I'm kind of like first getting my feet wet in it. So fast forward 10 years from then, that's when I'm kind of like in it in Mississippi State. And that's like around 09, 08. So mm -hmm. the whole music scene was changing at this point. Like you were literally going from the mixtape scene and streaming and all this stuff wasn't even heard of yet. We still on MySpace. We still on, you know what I'm saying, all these other platforms like mm -hmm. LimeWire, like people still download yeah, music. So like I remember the day. It was a it was a crazy <laughs> transition. So like it it <laughs> like I said, Mississippi just kinda you know what I'm saying, we just didn't have that 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 infrastructure on a metropolitan air city that like was drawing different people. Like what I love about Atlanta, what I love about like other big cities, they draw people from everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you get here, it's not, it's a, it's a, it's a gumbo of culture and, mm -hmm. and everybody putting that, you know what I'm saying, putting their pieces in it, that what makes it so intriguing. So, mm -hmm. I said, it just, it just, it was, we didn't have that, but I think now though, mm -hmm. the, the, the tables has really turned a whole lot back home, like as far as like, the culture of hip hop and just music and art like Jackson now is definitely leading the way, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, as far as like just music that's coming out of there, the type of artists being produced, like it reminds me, like I said, of being out here and seeing how, you know what I'm saying, how artists come up out of the underground or how they put in work over, over a certain time then they finally get their shine like so so who, who's who's some jackson artists you can kind of name drop uh for people to check out like um i'll top like dear silas is one he's dope like i, I haven't followed him for a while even when he was like before he changed his name inside he was like trey parker back in the day mm -hmm. but like him he's dope uh dollar black is dope um my partner uh slam pusher uh, let's see. Uh, Hollywood look. Um, okay. Okay. It's a, man, Jackson got a lot of folks. A lot of folks like uh, and even outside of Jackson, people who influence like I got a little partner, Josh Waters. He's from Hattiesburg. Mm -hmm. Uh, Quay. Like all these cats, like that Jackson still influenced them. You know what I'm saying? So like it's. I'm pretty sure I'm leaving off some name like Savvy, he down there, Jackson. It's a lot of folks, man. It's a lot of cats from Jackson, man, that's mm -hmm. just like coming out. And that's why I feel like they they leading the way, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying, in it. Because they got a diverse mm -hmm. group of, of artists coming out of there, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. 